under the LED lights in a glasshouse at the University of Queensland in Brisbane, these international barley varieties are thriving. They're being sampled for disease resistance, with researchers keen to establish how they hold up against Australia's major foliar pathogens. With the increasing use of stubble retention practices by growers, we've seen an increase in these pathogens. As they increase, they also evolve a lot quicker, and that's why we really need to look at the pathogen-host interaction and then also identify resistance that could be utilised to provide better varieties to growers. In an effort to boost the productivity and profitability of barley cropping systems, the GRDC is investing in cutting-edge genetic research to fast-track new varieties with improved foliar pathogen resistance. So our research program is essentially aiming at improving disease resistance against major foliar diseases in Bali, including net form, net blotch, spot form, net blotch and skull. And the idea is basically to develop novel tools that breeding programs can use to make more rapid gains in terms of accumulating or stacking up as many good resistance genes as possible. Dr Kai Fosfels and his research team are harnessing advanced computer capabilities and artificial intelligence to help determine optimal combinations of resistance genes. A process he believes will shave three years off conventional breeding programs. Have a look at this one here, for example. So that's a, that's a diverse barley accession from southern Spain. You can see it has like really black horns. Yeah, it's, it's actually a quite interesting one. To help identify new and diverse sources of resistance, the team has cast their net wide, examining thousands of exotic barley lines from more than 60 countries around the world. What we're going to do is we grow them, we take leaf samples, we extract their DNA, and then use that information along with phenotypic screenings for disease response, which is carried out by partners of ours um, across the country, and then use that information to track down resistance genes across the genome. Once we've got that information, once we've got that reference data set built, as we call that, we're going to use that and feed this into artificial intelligence and simulation-based um, approaches to essentially work out what the best combinations of lines might be that would stack up as many good genes or resistance alleles as possible. This data will give Australian barley breeders the information they need to develop elite varieties with durable resistance against multiple pathogens. While it's far from a straightforward process, they started with a strong knowledge base, thanks to the findings of the now complete Barley Foliar Pathogen Project. This project was developed initially to look at characterising um, the barley foliar pathogens and just understanding the interaction between the pathogen and the host um, somewhat better. Dr Liesl Snyman was part of the national project. She says that in recent years there's been a surprising increase in spot blotch samples collected from central Queensland, despite the recent dry conditions. With the increasing production in central Queensland and the increase that we see in the spot blotch pathogen in those areas, we realise that we do need to look a bit more at understanding that pathogen. And we've been through a drought period. If conditions change and we have more favourable conditions, we do expect to see a, a bigger increase in the presence of the spot blotch pathogen in central Queensland and its impact on barley production. In addition to understanding the pathogens across the growing regions, the project also screened more than 10,000 barley varieties for new sources of resistance, with a handful of promising lines passed on to Kai and his team to investigate further. We are in the really fortunate situation that due to the previous investment of GRDC, we know an awful lot about the complex interactions between barley and major foliar diseases. So we actually, we identified a couple of lines um, or populations that might carry really interesting resistance genes. And we're going to use those lines specifically in order to work out which the underlying genes actually are. And then we're going to use that information in the process going forward. It's a promising sign that growers can expect new varieties in the not too distant future. In the meantime, Liesl says there are a couple of best management practices all growers should be doing to reduce foliar disease risks. It is really important 
that you don't plant barley on barley and have some rotation practice in place. We've also seen through this project that if a particular variety is grown over large areas in consecutive years, then your pathogens um, kind of evolve and it just acquires higher virulence for those particular varieties. We really would like to see growers use seed dressing on an annual basis because that would protect them against early onset of net form of net plot. Um, it does provide protection against um, smuts which is becoming a bit more of a problem and then also early onset of powdery mildew. Go to the description bar below for the latest information, links and resources.